sun, cool mountain-like air and gorgeous views of the Mediterranean. Not the combination you find everywhere and so Mallorca was the perfect setting to test the new BMW i8 Roadster. Any open top needs that intoxicating combination to really work. The BMW i8 has always been hailed for its extremely futuristic, cutting-edge design and technology. I've been taken through the work carried out to create the open top version and how costs were kept in check to make the project feasible. So, think of the i8 Roadster then as a new model rather than a new body style or just a variant offering and you won't be wrong. So of course the Roadster picks up from where the i8 left off in terms of styling you still get that nice futuristic look of the car it's low slung typical sports car and yet very modern like I said Roadster badging makes it more obvious on the side and then it's really as you come to the back except for the fact that of course the roof's gone that you also start to see a slight difference in the styling because it is this element of the car that has been changed so that the roof can open and fold in there so that's really the big difference styling wise and uh, with the Roadster we of course got this new copper color as well uh, and it is the color we showed you the car for the first time in from the global motor shows and it was also displayed at our auto expo in New Delhi <laughs> The Roadster was always meant to provide all the things any convertible does. The wind in your hair, the sun warming your spirits while enjoying the exhilaration of ample performance capability. The aluminium chassis and carbon fibre shell combination maintain a surprising amount of rigidity and stability even with the roof gone. And with the rear seats gone as well, since the Roadster is a classic two-seater, the roof line of the folding top could be angled sharply downward, giving the i8 Roadster a much racier silhouette than its roofed sibling. Now because that folded roof doesn't really take up too much space, you get a little extra luggage space back here. Now, you've got three compartments as you can see, but you can actually fold this down and uh, create well enough room for like a carry-on bag there if you like the partitions are just so if you keep a smaller bag and it doesn't kind of slide around 90 liters of extra space back there which you might think is uh, not so important could come in really handy the roof is a special fabric but it's supported by an entire panel that sits below the cloth giving it structure that panel and frame are also made with carbon fiber that's another first Overall, the Roadster is just 60 kgs heavier than the Coupe. That's pretty unheard of. Now, unlike most roof systems, electric roof systems that is, this one isn't hydraulic. It's also run using electric motors. The reason for that, well, so that the whole operation is also nice and sort of silent in keeping with the nice quiet nature of the electric mode of the car itself. The fun factor is very intact with the car as it displays that incredible stiffness and therefore impeccable handling that the coupe always had. So of course overall the amount of power that you get and of course the driving range have both gone up. Now that's not just on the Roadster, it's on the regular coupe as well but uh, it's with the Roadster that this new powertrain has been introduced. We've told you all that before, so I won't bore you with the details. The new number though does sound obviously a little bit better with the extra 12 horses. Now, the big point here though is that uh, all the sort of learnings and takeaways from the Coupe, which came out a few years ago, have gone back into the car to just make driving dynamics that much better as well. And so even suspension settings have been completely reworked to try and give you an even more sporty experience. The car responds in a sports car like fashion and you can't help but constantly keep that fact that it's a plug-in hybrid at the back of your mind. The i8 Roadster will do 0 to 100 kilometers in 4.6 seconds 
It has an electronically limited top speed of 250 km per hour. Now the car's default drive setting is to stay in auto e-drive and that means it's optimally trying to manage both the systems the ice engine as well as the electric motor and if you do want to of course go in pure electric mode then you press the e-drive button down here and uh, then the car will travel up to 53 kilometers on pure electric mode and in that mode you can also kind of push it because it can go up to speeds of 120 kilometers per hour. Torque from the electric motor housed in the front of the car goes directly to the front wheels that it powers. Peak torque stands at 250 Nm, while the petrol engine that powers the rear wheels has 320 Nm of peak torque. This system is what gave the coupe and now the roadster its incredible agility. Now when you're driving the i8, coupe or roadster, you can get caught up in the fact that it is a plug-in hybrid. But you have to also remember that it is at the end of the day a sports car and so it has to have that characteristic. And uh, that's where having that carbon fiber that's been used in the construction of the car really comes to the fore because it's so nice and stiff. The integrity of it, especially here on the mountain roads, really comes to light. And uh, I have to say that's the part that you enjoy the most. The stiff dynamics keep you firmly planted and the steering is also up to the task, staying precise. All of that gets even stiffer and more dynamic when you flick the gear lever to the left and engage sport mode. Now it's threatening to rain later on, so before that happens and I have to put the roof up, I think I should enjoy the car in sport mode as well. Switch it to sport system completely changes the display turns red and of course the engine comes to life too the big negative for me is the extra thickness in that a pillar that's been put in on the roadster it creates quite an obstruction and on mountain roads in particular it was a bit of a challenge to have to look around it from both sides. BMW engineers told me that a lot of work has been carried out to cut the wind noise that is bound to be a problem in any convertible. But overall I found that wind noise is that Achilles heel then for this car. So that's the good thing, you still have a nice sound of that engine. There's a lot of wind noise though on the Roadster that's bound to happen when you take the top off, but uh, I have to say it's bothering me a little bit today. The uh, sound of the engine though, it's nice, like I said, it still remains nice and throaty and there's a good growl to it, despite the fact that, remember, it's just the 1.5 three-cylinder. Now, I said this during the time of driving the coupe and so I'm happy that some of that stays. And remember that a lot of that sound is enhanced by speakers on board and uh, on the Roadster, it actually varies how much of that sound comes into the cabin. So when you've got the roof uh, up, well, then you've got more of that being enhanced inside the cabin. When the roof's down, then not so much. And here's the interesting thing. When you're in the process of folding the roof up or down, well, the speakers regulate that sound so that you never hear a different intensity of that volume. You always hear the engine exactly the same. The car sounds its snorty, roaring best in sport mode naturally and that's best displayed on the highway where you can indulge in fast overtaking maneuvers and high speed cruising. On the twisty mountain roads, it was a tad muted for my liking even though the car did everything I wanted. Taking tight corners with finesse and accelerating out of them with ease. The cabin is very similar to what we've seen on the i8 before in terms of layout, the virtual cluster, iDrive, the updated latest version of course. The only difference of course is that you open this up and you have the little button now to operate the roof that opens and closes and you can operate that 
up to speeds of 50 km per hour. The i8 Roadster's cabin is sumptuous, nicely designed and well crafted. The use of leather and carbon fiber has been cleverly and intentionally directed to enhance the sports car feel. The car's central console houses the screen with the new iDrive with its touchpad topped dial. The car's new smart key lets you check on its location, battery and fuel levels and also fold up or down the roof and windows remotely. The lithium ion battery takes under 2 hours for an 80% charge and just under 3 for a 100% charge. That's using a fast charger and so a domestic outlet will charge the car to full in four and a half hours. There is regenerative onboard charging too, of course, that helps enhance battery power while on the move. The i8 Roadster's claim mileage in the European test cycle is 50 kilometers per liter. So all of that is impressive, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Expect the i8 Roadster to be launched in India later this year. Expect prices to stay well above 3 crore rupees when it touches down.